3D Boxing here with Texas Boxing Scene. Uh, we're honored to have on our guest, uh, Gatito Felix Garcia, Hi. undefeated 6-0, is back in the ring on September 15th in San Antonio, nearby San Antonio. Uh, Laredo's own Felix Garcia. How's it going? How's camp going? It's going good. Thank you for having me. Um, we're excited. We're ready. We're a week away, and we're just anxiously waiting the date. So uh, I want to get into it. It's a big card. The card is televised on Showtime. Um, you yes, fight sir. the guy. I don't know if you know him. He's from San Antonio, undefeated fighter. He seems bigger than you. We'll get into your weight later on. Uh, but how much do you know about uh, your, your po opponent, Joe Johnson, and, and what are your thoughts on him? I don't know much about my opponent, but like I've always said, uh, we get ready and um, we make sure we, we train as hard as we can. It's like if every fight is important and we train like if we're fighting for a world title. And you want a Texas title and you're on your way. You're, you're six and oh, uh, at 18 years, you're ready for at 18 years old. You're ready for a six rounder. I mean, obviously, you know, your team wants to move you pretty quickly, but I, I want to start from the beginning. Um, you know, you had a pretty good amateur career. Talk about your amateur career and, and, and your start in boxing. Um, my amateur career was really up and down. I went to a couple of national tournaments, didn't go the way we wanted to, but um, we took it all as learning experience and we kept moving on. Um, so you turned pro, I guess it was just over a year ago, right? Um, uh, yeah. Um, in Mexico, in Nuevo Laredo, just the other side of the, the other side. Um, two and all there, your first fight, you fight another undefeated guy. Did you know anything about him? You got the knockout. Talk about your pro debut and what it was like wearing the eight ounce gloves, no headgear. Talk about that experience. And what were you, 16 or 17? You were 17? 16. 16 then. Turn pro at 16. Uh, talk about that experience, that pro debut. Um, it was an amazing experience, especially because No Laredo had opened their their doors to me and my dad. My dad was also a professional boxer, so having him fight there before me was an amazing feeling when I came out. Um, the crowd recognized my dad, so um, when I came out, I had a lot of fans cheering. So it was it was awesome, man. Those eight ounce gloves, it's it, it feels good. Um, it's not like the amateurs, 10, 12 ounces. And I personally like the pros now more than the amateurs. Your style is more pro friendly than it is amateur style, right? I, I've talked yes, to sir. other guys about that. Some have an amateur style, some have a pro style. Uh, your, your style seems to more, more be fitting of a professional, which makes sense because your dad was a pro. I, I didn't know that. I, I'm just learning that now. Uh, your dad was a pro in Mexico. We fought in the States. Or talk a little bit about your dad's career because I, I, did, I didn't know that. He fought – both in Nuevo Laredo and here in Laredo, um, my dad was was a good fighter from what I've heard a bunch of people tell me. And um, it's like it's good for me to know that he was a good fighter because it just pushes me to be even better. So, I mean, this is something you were born into, right? Yes, um, so this is something you were raised to do. Um you're doing it at a really young age. Obviously, this is, you know, it's it's to you, fighting is just another day. But at 18, you already have a huge fan base. I was at your last fight. Uh, the crowd loves you. What's it like to be 18, still a baby? Are you still in high school? No, I just graduated okay. last year. I'm in uh, college. So you just, just graduated <laughs> high <laughs> just gra Oh, congratulations. We'll get into that later. Thank uh, you. Um, you know, have a crowd 18 years old cheering your name. Uh, but that also comes with expectations, right? What's it like to have, you know, a fan base and to also have expectations on you at 18 years old? Oh, having the the fan base is awesome. It's a bunch of amazing people that I've made throughout my whole amateur and professional career. And um, I feel like everybody, everybody supports me and it, it's good. It's uh. You know, it's a lot, and then, and then you know, there's there's expectations on you as well, which we're going to get into in, in, in just a minute. Um, but you know, Laredo is known. You know, when you drive into the airport, it says the home of the Canizales brothers, Orlando and Gabby. Um, I mean, yeah. they kind of put Laredo on the map. Um, it's the only reason why you know the boxing world knows Laredo, Texas, right? And it's got a really now Laredo has a really good boxing community. I want to talk to you about that, right? Uh, you know, uh, Jorge Castaneda 
Josh Juarez. Uh, there's been a lot, lot of fighters uh, in the amateurs as well. Jennifer Lozano really putting Laredo on the boxing map, making people take notice of Laredo. And obviously yourself now, what's going on in Laredo that all of a sudden there's all this good young talent, all, you know, around the same age, all coming out at the same time? Um, Laredo has always been filled with a bunch of talent. We just haven't had, like, people look at us. But thanks to, like you said, George Castaneda, Emilio Garcia, Jennifer Lozano, all of them representing us out of out of state, out of country. And it's it's awesome because now we have more people looking down on Laredo. Now, Jennifer and Emiliano, what the amateur route, long amateur career, Olympics, what made you want to turn pro at 16? And, and, and is this just your style is more fitting for the pros? Or what made you want to give up on the amateurs and say, this is not, now, now is the time to turn pro? Like, now is the time to do this at this level? The amateurs really wasn't for us. Like you said, my style. Um, we, we decided to turn pro because we had gone to the Golden Glove tournament uh, two years in a row. And... I, I still wasn't eligible to fight like at the at the 18 above yeah. but and when we went I was supposed to fight there was three four people in my in my weight class that I was supposed to fight and I did we went made the trip and didn't end up fighting so we my dad was like we we either wait in the amateurs and fight every national tournament which is once in every month and or we turn pro and we stay active and we went the pro route. It, it, it's turned out well for you. Are you happy with your decision? You're six at all. Like I said, you're, you're headlining calls already at, at 18. Your name is, is on, is on the, you know, um, on the billboards, right? It's, it's, it's Felix Garcia. Did you feel like, you know, you made the right decision giving up the amateur career and, and going professional at, at such a young age? Honestly, I do believe I, we made the right decision in going pro. We've had, um, a lot of accomplishments so far and we're just beginning and we're excited to see what the pros has in store for us. And we hope it's a good journey. It, it started off really well. You're, you're on a great trajectory, six and oh, um, it's last July, last year you made your first, you made your Texas debut in Laredo, your hometown debut, it was your third professional fight. I guess you had just turned 17 at that point. You could fight yes, in Texas. Sir. Um, you got to win there, the card. You moved to three and zero. What was it like fighting in front of you know a big crowd like that in, in your home city and and having all your fans? What, what did they travel to? I mean, Nueva Laredo is literally just across the way. Yeah. You have fans at Nueva Laredo, and then what was it like fighting you know in, in your home city in Laredo? There was a couple of people that did go to Nuevo Laredo and and support um, mainly family, but when I fought here for the first time, it it was incredible. The people and the atmosphere was just on point, and it just gave me more motivation when I came up. Um, and you know, it, it, it's everything's gone swimmingly. Uh, things couldn't have gone better. Um, you know, you, you're you're six and zero now, and you already have a cheering section, right? Like you already have a fan base. You you walked around the the, the, the arena, which was packed, and there's so many Gatito, Felix Garcia shirts, right? Like. What's that like? I mean, is it is it just normal to you, or what's because you know most eighteen year olds who just graduated high school don't have that. Um, but is it normal to you, or what's it like having a a big fan base at such a young age? At first, it was unbelievable. I felt like if I was in a dream, but as fights kept progressing and I just got used to it, and seeing all the people really really makes me feel good because. My my biggest goal um, is to inspire the youth here in Laredo, especially me turning pro at a at a young age. It's it would be awesome for me to inspire a bunch of people here. So you're you're six and zero. Your your last fight you had a, you had a test. You fought a good fighter, um, Jose Cassiano, um, in front of your hometown. Um, you took it, uh, but uh, was that? Challenge a little tougher than you expected, and, and how would you grade that performance? And and, and what did you think? Um, I I knew he was going to be a tough opponent, and I we have never said no to a challenge, and we just like to improve and show everybody that we're made like for the big leagues, and um, 
he was a tough opponent and he at the end of the fight I thanked him because not a lot of people would have gone six rounds. It was I don't know if if you were at the fight that was just in the, the Sam's Auto Arena um a couple of weeks ago, but he yeah. got a first round knockout of, of Leopoldo Martinez. Um so I that, that's a good fighter. You, you, yeah. you beat there at 18 years old. Um were you there? No, I was. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I, I remember, like, I know this name. This is the guy that fought Felix Garcia, and then he blew out Polo Martinez. Like, that's a, that's, that's impressive. Like, that, you know, going back, you say, like, wow, okay. Um, because he didn't have the shiniest record, but sometimes, you know, you get these tough Mexican fighters that don't have the best record, but they're good, right? Yeah. Um, he's a grown man, and, and and you beat him. Um, I think one of the judges had you winning every round. So, I mean. But it, it was tough, and and he pushed you, and 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 you know it was first time where you kind of had to dig deep, right? And you kind of had to, you know, find out who you are as a professional. Yes, sir. You know, what did you learn from that fight? What did you? I mean, you got the win. You know, you looked good in the fight, but what did you learn from that fight? What did you take from that fight? We learned that there was minor details that that we could have done better. Um, my shots could have been cleaner. We could have sticked out the jab a little bit more. We could have moved more, but um, at the end of the day, we got the victory, and hopefully this fight, y'all will be able to see a complete Felix Garcia. So you're going up, you're fighting another undefeated fighter in his hometown. Um, are you going to have fans travel with you? I mean, it's only about a two-hour ride, right? Are you going to have some fans travel with you to, to Laredo? Yes, yeah, so there's going to be, um, I think, a bunch of people from Laredo going to San Antonio. We're looking forward to now. You fought a lot in, in Northern Laredo. You fought a lot in, 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 in Laredo. This is the first time I think you're going, truly going into enemy territory. Now, it's not far. Like you said, you're going to have fans there, but you're going into San Antonio to fight a San Antonio fighter. Is yes, there a sir. different approach, or, or what's your thoughts on, on, on that? We, we have the same goal, and the goal is to win. And we, we're going to find a way. We'll. We'll dig deep if we have to, but we're, the plan is to come out with the win. Now, I, I want to ask you about your weight, right? Because this fight is fight. At, at, is that 135 or is he coming down to 130 for this fight? 130. 130, 130 coming, 131. He, 130. Okay, because he's fought at 135 before. He's yeah. uh, he's tall. Uh, he's a lot tall. I mean, I guess you're used to kind of being the shorter fighter a lot of times, but is 130 your best weight class? Do you plan on moving up, down, or, or where do you find where, – where do you think you're going to be fighting at in the future? At the moment, I feel like we're doing a good job at 130. I feel strong. I feel fast. Um, I honestly don't think I'd go down to 126. I think I'd maintain 130 and then maybe later on move up. So to 135. But right now, you're making 130 good. You feel strong at it, and you don't have any difficult ma difficulties making it? Yes, sir. All right. Very good. It, it, you know, 130 is a, a loaded division. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a really good division. They got a champion at 130 from Oshak, uh, from Houston, Oshaki Forster. Yeah. Um, you, you look at him and be like, if he can hold that title for a couple of years, that that's a future opponent for me. Like I could, you know, I could see myself fighting him. Um, right now we're taking one fight at a time, but it would be awesome. It would be an amazing experience. He's a good fighter. Um, he was he was the underdog his last fight and proved everybody wrong. And I picked he, him. To he win. deserved he, it. I, I picked him Shaki to win, but yeah, yeah. he beat Ray Vargas in in, in San Antonio. Yeah. yeah, I I thought he was gonna win too. I thought he was a bigger fighter. He was faster, stronger, and everything was on point that night. He was really sharp that night. Like everything was clicking for him, and he pretty much won every round. He dominated the yeah. fight. Um, I I want to talk to you about that, right? Like we talked about. Uh, well, okay, yeah. We talked about the Canzales brothers earlier, right? Like they, you know, the two champions from Laredo, and a bunch of other good fighters from Laredo. But your name is kind of held to a different esteem. Like they're kind of expecting you to get to that level. Yes, um, you know, what's that like having, like, you know, not pressure necessarily, but the expectations of your city kind of expecting you to get to a world title at, you know, not tomorrow you're 18, but at some point in the not so distant future, they're kind of counting on you to win a world title. What's that like having a whole city, you know, kind of counting on you? It's really unbelievable to me because for the amount of support I get from the city, um, Laredo has always, like I said, Laredo has been filled with many talent. There's a bunch of boxers who could be world champions. 
And I'm glad to be one of the people that are in that category. Um, we just had George Castaneda win the WBC youth, I think. Um, and he was fighting good. Um, and we're just waiting for our turn to be in the big leagues. So I just, you're fighting at the same weight as, as, as Jorge, 130. Do you, do you ever spar him? Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever, no, 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 not yet. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, Jorge kind of, yeah, he, Jorge and, and, and Jennifer Lozano kind of paved the ground for you. Is that someone like, you know, I know he's not that much older than you. I guess he's about 25, 26. Mm-hmm. Was that someone you kind of looked up to growing up? Like, okay, he's about my weight. He's from Laredo. He's doing big things. I can do big things. Honestly, we, we, I feel like every boxer here in Laredo, as everybody grows up, everybody motivates and pushes one another. Um, especially Jennifer and Emilio, how they're going, trying to go to the Olympics. Um, so everybody from here pushes them because we're trying to bring some gold medals to Laredo and we're trying to bring new world champions here to Laredo also. They're going to get they're gonna get that in, in the near future. And I want to talk to you about your path. Right? You're 6-0. and You've already fought a six rounder. You fight another undefeated fighter. Obviously, they want to move you pretty quickly, right? So, um, is there a blueprint in mind? Two years, four years, by the time I'm 22, I want to be fighting for a world title. By the time I'm 20, I want to be fighting top 10 fighters. Is there a blueprint in mind or, or, or what's kind of what's kind of your plan, you know, big picture wise moving forward? Um, our plan is, well, my goal is to be the the youngest world champion. Um, Bam has that right now. I was going to say that. He, he got it at 21. Yeah. He's going to have to move quick. Can you do it? Yeah, um, <laughs> by the way we're moving, I think it's really possible, hopefully by the age I'm 20, maybe early 21, be able to say I'm a world champion. Um, like you said, the skills are there. The ability is there, right? We got to keep seeing against, you know, higher level competition. Um, you know, assuming that everything goes well on September 15th at the Tech Port Arena, uh, in San Antonio, what do you want next? When do you want to be back in the ring? And, and, and when do you want to be fighting, you know, Higher level fighters. Not that you're not you're fighting a good fighter, but you know, yeah, the elite level fighters. When, when do you really want to start testing yourself against those guys? Um, I'm gonna leave that to my dad. I'm always willing to fight anyone. The the harder the challenge, the more it brings out of me, and the best you're gonna see out of me. So, um, when, when I'm gonna leave that to my to my team, and we'll move on from there. We're looking forward to seeing it. Um, Again, 130 pounder, uh, just 18 years old. I want to ask you this, and I meant to ask you this earlier. For an 18 year old who has a fan base, who has you know fame, notoriety, you stay really, really humble. Like you're really a humble, modest kid. How do you stay so humble when most 18 year olds would have an ego and doubt doing whatever, right? Yeah. How do you stay so humble and, and and so polite when you have all that in front of you as an 18 year old? Um, my parents raised me right. My parents always told me to stay humble and never forget where you come from. Um, uh, my, my goal is to bring a lot of joy and excitement to Laredo, but also give back to Noel Laredo because they, they opened the doors for me and my dad and just to give a little something back also. Well, when you turn pro at 16, you're fighting, I don't know, presumably a grown man could be a lot older than you. Is there any fear or any doubts? Like, you know, just, what are you, 10th grade, 11th grade at that point? I was uh, 11th grade. 11th grade. A high school junior. Fight the yeah. I mean, is there any hesitation or you just, this is just, you've been doing this your whole life that it's just natural to you? Um, I think it has just become natural to me. I don't, I don't get nervous. I get excited. The, the closer the fight gets, the day of the fight, um, it's all filled with excitement and good vibes, good energy for me and my team. And everybody's just on the same page. And I think that's what, that's what really puts us out there, that our communication is always on point. And if we need to change the game plan, we will on spot. I, Felix Garcia, it's an honor. It's a privilege to have you on September 15th. You're on a big card uh, in San Antonio, uh, the Tech Port Arena. Uh, you know, what's that like being part of such a big card so so early in your development? Oh, it's awesome. Um, I'm waiting for the day to come already. Um, I'm excited. The team is excited. And we're ready for everybody to see what 
the amount of talent we have. Look, Garcia, it's an honor. It's a privilege. I know you have uh, some some sponsors you want to give a big shout out to. Uh, let everyone, let everyone know who, who those are. Yes, I would like to give uh, a shout out to my sponsors: Bondock Securities, uh, Fired Up Staffing, Intocable, Mia by Teresa, um, Cuadra San Carlos, South Boot Camp, uh, Freddy's Insulation, Variety Meats. Thank you all. It's got a lot of sponsors. Uh, <laughs> you got a lot of people who want, want to be associated with you. Uh, uh, your nickname too, Gatito. Is was your dad the cat? So then you're. Your Gatito, is that, or, or, or how did yeah. you get that nickname? Yeah. Um, my dad was El Gato, so yeah. everybody called me Gatito, Kitty when I was little. So now we just, um, we're continuing with the tradition and El Gatito is the nickname. Felix Garcia, the next world champ from from Laredo, Texas, uh, the Gateway City. Tell everyone where they can find you on social media. They can find me on Instagram at the official Felix Garcia, or you can find me on Facebook at Felix Garcia. Appreciate your time, champ. God Thank bless. You Looking so much forward for to seeing you me. next Friday at Tech Port Arena, San Antonio. God bless yes, you. Sir. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good day.